Hello, folks, and welcome back to another very special spooky episode of Are You a Fan? If you like the episode, give us a like, share, follow, and a subscription. Okay, so question for Joker and the audience. What's up? If you could be the, if you had the option given by like the gods or whatever to be the original of a race of like, like the first of a race of like, say, vampires, werewolves, or like shapeshifters, you'd be immortal. But if you die, they all die too. Would you take it? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I'd go some Emperor Palpatine on that. Because <laughs> that was very much his plan is if he, if the Empire couldn't keep him, he'd do, he'd mess them up too. I would totally do that. I mean, uh, if you guys can't keep me alive, y'all don't deserve my powers. I mean, arguably, it would make you the most like, yeah, the most protect, well protected person. Exactly, because they all want to live. Exactly, yeah. You'd have a you'd have a standing army just because they didn't want to go down. And I would love to have a standing army and be immortal. God, that yeah. would be so much fun. I'd take it too. You know what? <laughs> we will rule this world with an iron fist. <laughs> Okay, so let's get in. Let's, that brings us into this week's character, Dracula from Castlevania. So let's get into the real world first, and let's get going. Okay, so real world. Dracula Vlad Tepes, or simply known as Dracula, real name, Math- Mathias Krongvist. Yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce his, his human name. I feel I feel like I'm offending somebody. By the way, I pronounced that. <laughs> okay, so that's what we got for the name, though. Uh, sorry if I have some mispronunciations here. Uh, but this character is a fictional character from the Castlevania video game series, which would eventually become a comic series, eventually a TV series. They got a lot of media. It's similar to what happened to like, uh, Mortal Kombat. Exactly. It started as a game and then expanded outwards. Which, yeah, not bad. <laughs> So, a vampire and a magician, he is the main antagonist of the series and the final boss of almost every installment. He is the overall protagonist in the rebooted Castlevania trilogy, Lords of Shadow. Though he does take his classical a classical antagonist role in the game Mirror of Fate, where his origin is heavily altered. Okay. I mean, you know, when you, when you have a series that runs probably as long as this one, there's going to be some alterations. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, I mean... For as few as it seems to have, that's not that's pretty impressive. That yeah. compared to a lot of long running series. Ah, true. They're not wrong there. Yeah. Mortal Kombat, for example. <laughs> Just leave the timeline alone. <laughs> Damn it, Barry. <laughs> okay, so the Dracula of Castlevania is based on Bram Stoker's character in the novel of the same name, who is in turn likely named for uh, Vlad Vlad Third uh, Dracula of Wallachi. Wallachia. V- v- Wallachia. God dang it. He's arguably one of my favorite historical figures. I can't believe I messed that up. I can't either. <laughs> but I feel like as we do these yearly episodes of Dracula, I think that's the one point that's going to keep coming up. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure every version is based off of Bram Stoker's Dracula. I do. I do. For those of you wondering, go back and watch our Dracula from Marvel because Bram Stoker and the book exist in the Marvel verse. And that was it's a great, r- real fun story about that. The Castlevania Dracula draws some history from both, but instead of only preying on maidens, this version threatens whole realms with his armies at like at the least. Dang, this guy is like going for conquest. And at the worst, is presented as a very the very embodiment of evil. Yeah, that would be worse. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So he is, however, capable of loving uh, relationships. His evil nature is partly fueled by the loss of the two women he loved. Isn't every evil, guys? (laughs) Eh, that's about a a 50-50. True. Okay. And despite their differences, he loves his son, Alucard. Aw, good father. So, in the series reboot, Castlevania Lords of the Shadow, Dracula is reimagined as an 11th century holy knight named Gabriel Belmont and serves as a central character of the game and its two sequels. The Lords of Shadow series does tell the story of Gabriel's quest to save the world, fall into darkness, and journey of redemption. Oh, wow, that is a major change from... <laughs> that one is, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's a huge change. Because that like, also just straight up changes his name. Yeah, because the Belmonts are like... 
a completely different faction yep. <laughs> that are kind of against him. <laughs> so, okay. Dracula has become one of gaming's most popular villains based on his role in the franchise. Yeah, this, this franchise kind of made him the villain of gaming. Oh, heck yeah. And arguably, like, yeah, like we said... We never, like, we never really, me, I've never really played the games that much. Like, if I was in an arcade and the old ones were there, I'd play them. But even I know this character. I've never played them, and I know him from Castlevania. <laughs> yeah, that just should speak. The, the, the guy's presence speaks for itself. It really does. So, in 2006, by Game Informer, he'd be listed as the third top villain. He was also listed as the number seven most reoccurring video game character who has died repeatedly and been resurrected. He is also ranked third on EGM's top ten badass undead. Yeah, we're about to get into a lot of his listings in <laughs> rankings. I was going to say, those, uh, I think those rank. Like, there's like four paragraphs of this alone. Holy cow. Well, let's get, let's do it. Game Daily ranked him number 16 in their top 25 evil masterminds of all time. Article noting his uh, persistence. Game Daily would continue saying his persistence results in him being ranked amongst the most persistent video game villains of all time. Which, I mean, yeah, when you're coming back that many times. You, right, it's like, he's just going to keep going. What else do you call that? So IGN would list him in eight in their top ten most memorable villains article. In a later article, they would also list him as one of their favorite monsters in video gaming, stating a preference for the Castlevania representation of Dracula over the others due to him having, quote-unquote, a sense of fashion and style that few other vill versions possess. They would also list him as the 23rd best video game villain, calling him one of the most prolific video game villains ever. I mean, the style alone, the guy do oh, know how yeah. to dress. He is, he is. It's all about that drip, Karen. Dude, right? <laughs> it's just the drip. <laughs> okay, so Game Raider has listed him first on their list of video game villains who never stay dead. Not wrong there. <laughs> uh, stating that he has died more than any other video game villain ever, and that like the Legend of Zelda antagonist, uh, uh, God, Ganon. G Ganon. I God, thank yeah. you. He never learns from his previous battles. I mean, I feel like if you can just, without consequence, just keep coming back. Why would you? I mean, it's like Wolverine. The guy, like, like the guy doesn't have a battle strategy. He just, he just he's goes. not gonna die. Yeah, he just goes. If he dies, he comes back. Whatever. Yeah. He does it and again. Dracula's just like, yeah, like I'll be back. And it makes more sense for him not to have a battle strategy over Ganon because he's more like his wine to destroy things is more emotional and passionate. Oh, yeah. It, it's all that like emotional anger. Urge. Ganon. What the heck, man? What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't take a moment before you resurrect. Be like, <laughs> how do I take out the Triforce? Right. So journalists would also comment on the other characterizations of Dracula. Uh, Gabriel Belmont was listed as the fourth best video game hero who becomes evil by what culture, citing this twist is how the character becomes Dracula. Uh, similarly, Games Radar also listed Gabriel seventh in their top seven fallen heroes that become awesome villains, mentioning how his personality changed in the franchise when becoming a vampire. Which is kind of cool that they also took into account his other characterizations. Yeah. Which I mean, I get like it's one of those like I'm not I'm never really always thrilled when they make major alterations in that, but it does sound like an interesting concept. Yeah, and it sounds like they they handled it well. Yeah, and honestly, I'm with the sh uh, the way the show's going. I'm curious if they may touch on this, like do a flashback, and maybe have that be his continuity. Good question. It's gonna be guess we have to see. So I have no say on that because I haven't seen the show either. Oh, I love the show. <laughs> Okay, let's get into in-universe. Okay, so in uh, let's starting out with 1094. That was a long time ago. Right. So the man, later known as Dracula, was originally born Ma Matthias Krongvist. Yeah, glad you got to take that one again. Krongvist. Krongvist. We'll just keep uh, going. Yep. Sometimes during the sometime during the mid to late eleventh century, he served in a company of knights alongside then Baron Leon Bel Belmont, 
With the combination of Matthias's brilliant military strategies and Leon's skill with a sword, their company was unstoppable. Okay, it, it that I do like that off the bat. We're getting a look into the fact that this character is not a stupid character. Oh yeah, no, he, he was very seems very very brilliant. Yeah, just you know doesn't learn from previous mistakes. I do like too that they kind of put him and the Belmonts together from an early time. It kind of shows the vendetta between the families. Yep, and we do actually kind of get into some of that and what caused that vendetta. Yay! So Matthias would marry a woman named Elizabetha. Weird having an A at the end of Elizabeth. Oh, um, that is. So he was deeply in love with her. Unfortunately, while away on a campaign, uh, Elizabeth would die due to an illness. Upon returning and learning of her death, Matthias was overtaken with despair so profound that he would become bedridden. Which apparently also caused some concern from uh, Mr. Belmont. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd be worried. I'd be worried if uh, your spouse died and you suddenly became bedridden. Be a little concerned about that. Well, he was more concerned because of uh, Matthias's mi- military strategies. What's going to come to that if he's being bedridden? Oh, so, yeah. yeah it, it was kind of a, a selfish, uh, yeah, concern. But uh, okay, cool. <laughs> Dang. Okay, so during this time, uh, Matthias would grow angry at God for allowing Elizabeth. Uh, man, that is weird to say. <laughs> Uh, but allowing Li- uh, he would grow mad at God for allowing Elizabeth uh, to die uh, such an early death while he was away risking his life and fighting in his name. He thought it was unjust and unfair for God to take away what mattered most to him. Which I get that. It's one of those like, I'm throwing my life on the line every day and you take her? You know, the, the stereotypical die too young angst, essentially. Yeah, like <laughs> why not me, God? Why yeah. me? So Matthias then began searching for ways to become immortal and show God that he didn't have a final say in everything and that he could defy God's decrees by existing outside of them. He would then learn about it, uh, something called the Crimson Stone, which was considered to be a treasure among vampires. Didn't say how, but they did say he would later somehow obtain it. Huh. Kind of want to know where he found it just out of curiosity. Right? Because, yeah, they did not go into that whatsoever. I'd definitely search that out. <laughs> Okay, so through his acquiring the arcane relic, an evil deity known as Death would bind himself in servitude to Matthias, as Death would only follow he who controls the Crimson Stone, which uh, they do bring in the Death character in the show, and it's pretty awesome. (laughs) It'd be kind of awesome to have control of Death. Right? Heck yeah. So with the stone, Matthias could not only control the power, powerful spirit creature, but also absorb the souls of slain vampires and add their powers to his own. However, as an effect of this, humanity would be lost and he would become a vampire himself. Which I don't think he really cared about. With yeah. his whole plan. I don't, I don't think that was just a... I don't know if I would say bonus or just a side effect. I'd say side effect, but not really a negative, considering he already, as far as he's concerned, lost his humanity. Yeah. Like, he, he has nothing to live for except spiting God. Yeah, at that point. Like, so, you know, humanity doesn't really matter to that guy. Yeah, becoming a vampire is just a side effect at this point. <laughs> right? So the young knight now had all the resources he needed to plan his scheme to become an immortal. Matthias eventually came in contact with the fa- powerful vampire lord named Walter Bernhard, who also had somehow obtained the Ebony Stone which was another vampiric treasure. This locked his forested realm and castle in eternal night, thereby making him the most powerful vampire. Makes sense. If you don't have to worry about the sun, you can kind of just dominate your land. Oh, exactly. But also kind of interesting to see that like Dracula wasn't the OP to begin with. Which I kind of like. Yeah. Because it kind of made him work for his power. Exactly. Which... uh, uh, once again, uh, it's in our list. Go back and watch the Marvel Dracula. They also kind of do that with him, too. Yeah. I'm sort of seeing a tra- with only two Draculas we've done, but I'm starting to see a pattern. As we'll see if that continues next year. <laughs> I guess coincidence, because it's only twice. Well, like I said, we'll yep. find out next year. Yep. <laughs> so, Walter being bored with his uh, due to his immortality, <laughs> and in order to distract himself from that, he would enjoy playing life and death games with brave humans. To raise the stakes of the game, so to make the humans more interested, he would steal that which is most precious from his target. 
You know, why not? Steal something precious, you know. They don't want to play the game now. Right. Bit of a D, bit of a D move. Bit of a D move, I will say. Can't say we wouldn't do that if we were bored with immortality. You know what? I can't <laughs> deny that I wouldn't reach that point. I'd hope I wouldn't, but, you know, I get bored easily now. Exactly. <laughs> We'd get bored in 10,000 years. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Matthias suggested targeting Sarah Trent Trentow. A the fiance of Leon Belmont to Walter. The knight would make an interesting player in Walter's game because according to Matthias' stories, his combat prowess was second to none. Walter, who didn't realize he was being tricked, ordered his forces to invade Leon's domain in order to capture Sarah. Okay, so yep, seeing some... Uh... Seeing some betrayals going on here. Yeah, and you, you kind of start seeing almost Matthias's version of Palpatine of doing some real deep scheming. Yeah, like Dev. Yeah, he basically is getting his military friend to help him overthrow the other head honcho vampire. Yeah. Man, this guy is good. It's tragic. Oh, yeah. And all going according to Matthias's plan, Leon would go to Walter's castle to save Sarah and defeat Walter. Which, yep. Uh, after Walter was dying, uh, death appeared and took his soul and granted the vampire's power to Matthias, who would materialize in the castle. It was only in his final moment that Walter realized w- what was happening and what Matthias' true intentions were. Due to absorbing Walter's soul, Matthias became the most powerful vampire, though the ebony stone eluded him due to being destroyed in Leon and Walter's battle. Ooh, so close. So he, he just straight up was like, okay, get my military friend that is second to really none. I'm going to get him to kill you. I'm going to take your powers, and we'll go from there. A little sad they lost the stone, though. Yeah, but at that point, I don't think you really needed it no more. True. Would, true. Yes, just would have made it more OP, but clearly doesn't need it. Not, a hand, not really the biggest handicap he could have. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> So Matthias then declared that he had never spent a better night and gave Leon his gratitude. A confused Leon demanded an explanation, to which Matthias would reply that he needed to, that he needed a powerful vampire soul and knew that Leon had it in him to destroy Walter so that he could take the soul. Okay, um, I'd be a little pissed off. I would be too. And it just kind of keeps getting worse. Oh, yay. Let's let's continue. Leon asked in disbelief if his best friend had abandoned humanity. Matthias confirmed this and revealed his motive. He admitted that everyone involved in the ordeal were just pawns in his plan to become the most powerful vampire and curse God forevermore because of the God because of God's cruelty. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'd be real upset too. Yeah, and then, like I said, it just keeps getting worse. So Matthias would then offer Leon eternal life as he too suffered over the death of his beloved. Leon refusing because eternity without the one he loved would be empty and Matthias's twisted plan had cost Sarah her life. Matthias believed that Leon, out of all people, would be the one to understand him, but when that wasn't the case, he'd become a bat and fly away, and the two would never meet again. He would also order death to dispose of Leon. So yeah, he he caused uh, Leon's lady to die. Oh, so that's well, yeah, because he they never really mentioned it, but yeah, apparently she dies in this scenario. Ooh, yeah, no. So I said said, he just keeps getting it gets keep gets worse and worse for his friend. (laughs) I yeah, I would have been royally pissed. Okay, well, um, that explain that explains immediately the start of the feud between the families. <laughs> yep. Uh, Matthias would then go into hiding in foreign lands, and he continues to curse God. Eventually, he named himself Lord of the Vampires and King of the Night. Which I mean, you know, having that OP soul and a bunch of other souls and controlling death, and then you can just keep getting souls. What vampire is going to stand against you? Maybe enough of them, but that's even questionable. Right? Considering they're all feuding amongst themselves, probably, given the time periods. <laughs> yep. So to continue on, kind of a little condensed history from 1094 to 1476. At some point during Matthias's unholy life, he would build a magic castle in the province of Wallachia, 
where he would recruit humans and other beings who had turned their back on God or were shunned by the light. Matthias would grant some of them the forbidden knowledge of the devil forgery and allowed them to practice their rites in his castle. All right, it's a building an army. Which, if I remember correctly, he named his castle Castlevania. Ah, That's where the name comes from. That Which, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, uh, like, that cat, like, in the show, the castle's awesome with the things it can do. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay, so one day he met a kind woman named Lisa, with whom he would eventually become romantically involved. She reminded Matthias very much of Elizabetha. Lisa loved Matthias very dearly, despite his views on life, and they would eventually have a son together named Adrian Fahrenheit Tepes. I'm assuming I said all that all that correctly, but you know, I'm assuming too. But it's an interesting middle name. But this uh, this uh, their son would be later known as Alucard. <laughs> Dracula spelled backwards. Yeah, and I and unfortunately, thanks to uh, Helsing abridged, I can never think of Alucard the same. Same, same. Every time <laughs> the name comes up, I'm like, ha. Ah. <laughs> So eventually rumors started to spread that Lisa's medicinal practices were a form of witchcraft. This would cause her to be arrested and uh, sentenced to death by the authorities. Lisa uh, being captured and crucified, an event Adrian witnessed but was prevented from intervening in, as the execution would have traditionally occurred during the daylight hours. Matthias wouldn't, uh, would not even become aware of it until hours later, and when he did learn of it, it drove him over the edge. Eventually, he changed his name to Dracula of Vlad Tepes and plotted his revenge against mankind for loosely taking away what mattered to him most. Yeah, and let me say, just for those of you who haven't seen it, the show does an amazing job of showing that. And now, he's lost two women he loves. He has now cursed mankind and God. <laughs> yeah, this guy's... And with the powers of death and the god, like he's he's a god on in his own right. He really is, and it makes sense why he becomes such a villain. Yeah, I don't blame the dude. Humanity has yet to prove to him that it deserves to live. I don't think it does. <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like I should disagree with you just to keep a yin yang thing going. <laughs> but I draw. I I've dealt with enough people in my life where I'm like, do we really need to continue this? Of that. So that's it. Uh, what we got for the origin story of Dra uh, Dracula from Castlevania. Let's get into powers and abilities now. Yeah, this one is a little shorter and a little more generic because they didn't really much go over his powers except for when it's in battle. Which makes sense. Uh, I mean, we also kind of got like one of his main powers just throughout this whole story. Yeah, pretty much. He controls death. Yeah, and can re and, have it reap souls, and a lot of his powers because how the Crimson Stone works come from the Crimson Stone. Yeah, so let's get into it. So Dracula has displayed great power in battle. These include, but are not limited to, the ability to spawn fire in various forms, uh, such as simply balls of flame or burning meteor-like spheres. Control over he has control over bats and other creatures of the night. He has the ability to transform into a wolf, mist, a bat, or other more hideous forms to heighten his powers. A vast array of acidic blood magic. Oof. That just sounds painful. Right? God forbid. Oh, you just cut his arm off, lose your sword. And he's like, I'm, I'm going to shove that end in you now. <laughs> like, okay. That'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah. So he also, uh, among other powers, such as teleportation. My God, this is... Yeah, he's a beast. It's not enough if you control death. You just have to have all this. <laughs> yep. So he also has the power of uh, dominance, which allows him to absorb the souls of monsters and use their abilities as his own. Devil forging, which creates loyal minions from wisps of conjured matter. And he is highly adept in the secret art of alchemy and is a genius tactician. Okay, I kind of forgot, even though we read about I forgot he gains the actual powers of the souls he absorbs. Yeah. And from the sounds of it, it's not just other vampires now. Sounds yeah. like he just takes it from anything. Which Dude, this, is, I think, even worse. This guy. I think this guy could, like, want, like, want, like, one. I think he could, on his own, take on, like, almost any superhero verse. 
pretty close. If he just starts small, starts building different, like all the powers, like yeah. Imagine he gets Superman's power. <laughs> Sun's no longer a factor. Nothing's no longer a factor. <laughs> oh. So into his other media, being this specific version doesn't have a huge amount. Uh, he, while never being mentioned by name and only referred to as the Count, he appears in the 1989 animated series Captain in the Game Master. He appears, as we've talked about, in the 2017 animated series Castlevania, and apparently also appears as a boss on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, that's kind of a random one. Yeah, it was. Huh. <laughs> that I also didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. That seems out of nowhere. Okay, yeah, well. That, that's it. <laughs> that's all we got for uh, Dracula from Castlevania. I guess I'll ask the question that we always ask. You a fan, Joker? Of this specific version, I this is all I've known about him. So I'm always a fan of Dracula. <laughs> Fair. So I feel like that just kind of proxies this one into it. <laughs> But it definitely makes me now want to watch the TV show and go back and play the games that I've never played. Fair. I played a bit of the games. They are fun. Like, even the old side-scroller, like, two-bit ones, like, they are free fun games for their time. And honestly, as just a fan of animation shows, I love the show, the anime. So, yep, I'm definitely a fan. For anyone that's still listening, if you got something out of this, enjoyed the episode, or even like the character before from a movie, comic, cartoon, hell, even that t-shirt that you saw one time. You're a fan too. If you want to jump on this train, why not subscribe and share with a friend? Dick Rail out. Y'all keep riding them rails. <laughs>